seven. Big for the seventh grade. Monday, January 7th, 1935. Now I get to walk into a school where I don't know anyone. Correction, I don't know anyone except a piece of work named Piper. One enemy, the rest strangers. This is not good, for creep's sake. Plus it's mid-year, so everybody has made all the friends they want already. No one will need a new friend except me. Was this how Natalie felt on the way to the Esther P. Marinoff School? Maybe some big ladies will come along and drag me inside kicking and screaming too. Sometimes it seems easier to be Natalie. People force her to do stuff. I have to force myself. I try to remember how I would have walked into a new class at home. I guess that's the problem right there. At home, I never would have thought about how to walk into a stupid room. I would have just done it. I take a deep breath and shove open the door. Everyone is looking up at the teacher, including Piper. Third row, second seat. The teacher is writing on the chalkboard in perfect Palmer Method handwriting. I spot an empty seat and I wonder if I can get away with just sitting down like I've been here all year. The teacher turns around. She's got black, black hair and a tight white little face as if her skin size is too small. And you are, she asks, Matthew Flanagan, but everyone calls me Moose. I'm Miss Bimp, she says, looking at her row sheet. Her pencil moves down the list. Excuse me, Mr. Flanagan, but I don't see your name here. Are you certain you have the right class? Seventh grade advanced English? Yes, ma'am, I say. She squints at me. Big for seventh grade, aren't you, Mr. Flanagan? Yes, ma'am. Miss Blimp clears her throat. She puts her hand to her mouth and speaks behind it. This wouldn't be your second time around in seventh grade, would it? Piper laughs first, then the whole class busts up. My face burns, my ears are like two heaters attached to my head. No, ma'am, I say. That's enough class. All right, fine, Mr. Flanagan. Take a seat there in the back so you don't block anyone's view of the board. This week, we're continuing our unit on oral reports. I'd like you each to write an outline for a two-minute speech. Remember, beginning, middle, end. Keep it short. Moose, have you written outlines before? Yes, ma'am, I say. Excellent. Her stiff mouth flips up. This is supposed to be a smile. It looks like it hurts. The topic for today's speech is, she writes on the board, what I did over Christmas vacation. I'll give you 15 minutes. Then we'll start right here. She wraps her knuckles on my row. That's just figures, doesn't it? I take out my notebook. It seems like I've hardly started scribbling ideas when Miss Blimp, boom, pin downs. Listen up, Scout McIvory, you're first. <clears throat> Scout has the kind of hair that grows up instead of down. He has a friendly smile and everything he does, he does quickly. I don't pay much attention to what he says. When he walks back to his seat, I see he's got a baseball glove under his desk. Within seconds, I've dipped my pen in my inkwell. Do you play ball, I write? <clears throat> the note travels up the road to Scout. Even Piper passes it up with no comment. After Scout reads it, he turns around and smiles at me. Then his head ducks down to write his response. Southfield, it says when it comes back. After school today, we need players. Scout. His handwriting is big and wild. It takes up the whole backside. I can't believe my luck. I'm about to write, what position do you play when I see Piper walk up the aisle? She waits while Scout moves his books out of her way. Even after Scout's done moving them, she still waits like he hasn't moved them far enough, although he clearly has. Scout pushes the, the last little corner in and she sells past. In front of the room, Piper still waits like she's not going to open her mouth until she has every single person's eye on her. She doesn't have an apron on, which wouldn't be strange except every other girl in class does. I sang a solo for our convicts on Alcatraz. I sang Silent Night for Al Capone, Machine Gun Kelly, Roy Garner, and the others. There were tryouts in early December, and I was given the only solo spot. We walked around the outside of the sale house caroling. So I didn't actually see Capone this time, but I'm almost sure I heard him call out, sweet as a songbird. No kidding, a fat kid says. The Al Capone, Piper nods, the very same. How do you know it was him? I recognize his voice. 
You gotta be kidding, another kid mutters. Moose Flanagan lives on Alcaraz too. Pipel smiles at me like we are best friends. Maybe he can tell you more. What the heck was that? Take the little policewoman off Alcaraz and she runs her mouth like crazy. Capone this, Capone that. Exactly what the warden said never to do. And now if I don't talk about Alcaraz, how I'll look like a chump. And if I do, she'll tell daddy on me. Score one for daddy's little miss. The girl who comes after Piper is up front row, but everybody is so busy talking, no one notices. Miss Bimp wraps her pointer stick so hard, she practically breaks it before people settle down. The girl turn goes lickety split, and so does the next guys. I'm up now. I look out at the strange faces. My arm feels too long. I try crossing them, putting my hands in my pockets, holding one arm with the other. My pants are too tight in the waist and in the crotch too. How come I never noticed this before? My dad is the electrician on Alcaraz. I moved there, I mean here, from Santa Monica and the most exciting thing that happened to me this vacation was my mom didn't feel like cooking because our pans were still packed. So my dad brought home a plate of roast chicken, potatoes, and cooked carrots. I paused a minute. This wasn't what I wrote in my outline. I'm going free form now. From the sale house kitchen. It was cooked by a kidnapper, a two-time murder, and a postal robber too. Wow, somebody says. Were you scared? <clears throat> no, I make a scoffing noise like this is the silliest thing I ever heard. The truth is, I was terrified. For the first time in my whole life, I skipped supper. Told my parents I had a stomach ache, which has never stopped me from eating before. He could have been killed, Piper says in a stage voice. She's shaking her head as if it's a wonder I'm here to tell this story. They tried to poison you, a girl with chick muck cheeks said. No, but they could have. Any of us could have been poisoned at any time, Piper agrees. Is that all, Mr. Flanagan? Miss Blimp cuts in, tapping her pencil on the desk. Yes, ma'am, I say. When I get back to my seat, I trip on a girl's foot and knock my inkwell over. Ink seeps through a crack and drips on my leg. I spend the rest of the class trying to clean it up. After the bell rings, I catch up with Piper in the hall outside. I thought we weren't supposed to talk about Alcaraz, I say. Why did you then? Piper asks, shifting her books to her other arm. I open my mouth to answer, but no words come out. Why did I, anyway? Because you did, I finally spit out. Because I did? Isn't that the sweetest thing? Piper smiles at me. I hurry to keep up with her. Piper is a good six inches shorter than I am, but walks faster. How can this be? She stops and looks at my pants. I look down at myself and see a big black ink blotch, the shape of Florida, uncomfortably close to my fly. So are you going to help me with my project or not, she asks. What project? Didn't I tell you? We're going to sell the Acaraz laundry service to kids at school. You know, get your clothes cleaned by famous Alcaraz convict Al Capone, Machine Gun Kelly, and Roy Garner. We'll charge five cents a shirt. No, no IOUs. Money will be split four ways. Jimmy and Annie will help us put the laundry through in their family's bags so they each get a cut. Plus you and I. You're going to sell the Alcaraz laundry service? Why? I ask. I just told you why. Money, Piper starts walking again. Does your dad know about this? She snorts. Not hardly, she says, taking off again. Hey, I hurry after her as she ducks into a doorway. I didn't say, get out of here, you big baboon. This is a girl's bathroom. A blonde with angry pop-out eye shouts. Three girls are putting on lipstick. Another is closing the stall door. All the way to my next class, I hear the sound of Piper's laugh. It plays over and over in my head. Thank you.